let's just have a moment for the sash. A moment for the sash. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my Miss Namibia journey. Um, for those of you who don't know, I took part last year and I was part of the top 30 as well as the top 12 final girls for the competition. And I just want to share my journey with you guys, so that's what this video is about. Um, if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for tuning in again and I hope you find this video entertaining. I think my Miss Namibia story is so fun, I love telling it. <laughs> I'll tell it to anyone who asks, that's why this video is being made. Nobody asked, but I'm making it anyway, <laughs> okay? Um, and if you are new, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this video. And today I'm just gonna be telling you guys a fun story about my journey. So I hope you like the video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and please do subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, join the gang. I don't know, we don't have a name yet, but we're working on it. Okay, so I'm going to get right into it because there's quite a bit to cover. So this is going to be a long video, guys. Uh, bear with me. I, um, I want to cover as much as I can and, as, and in as much detail as possible. So I'm going to get right into it, guys. Let me not keep you any longer. Let's go. So I was inspired to film this video when my dear old friend Facebook reminded me that a year ago, it was actually yesterday, the 14th um, of May, the top 30 finalists for Miss Namibia were, were announced. So it was quite exciting. It took me back immediately to that day when I got that call. So here I am. And I hope you guys enjoyed this story. We're gonna get, I keep saying we're gonna get right into it, but we're in it, okay? We are within. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is how this thing, taking part in Miss Namibia has always been a dream of mine um, I can give credit to my mom for planting that seed really really early on she was the one who was always rooting for me to model to put myself out there in any way I remember when we lived in New York she I have such a vivid memory of this she took me to a modeling agency called Barbizon and, and it was like a modeling slash grooming etiquette thing talent management situation but of course they were asking for money and you know, it was like, we were like, mm, maybe not. So we let it go. But I, I just remember her hustling for me like that. And I was like, what does this lady think I'm capable of? Like, this is pretty cool. Right? She, she believed in me um, before I even th thought I could do anything great, right? So that's, oh, I love my mama for that. Anyway, so that's my mama. And she also took part in um, some local, pageants um too she was a little pageant girl and she was like doing her thing so she i'm sure she was like let me carry this on to my child whoever's interested and i guess i was the one who showed interest so yeah that seed has been planted with my mom and i just after after I, as i grew up it, it just stayed with me so i was like miss namibia i want you right i was like i want you okay so the seed has been planted I then like ran with it and fortunately, fortunately, I'll never say unfortunately, fortunately um, my dad was a, was a diplomat so we lived outside of the country for most of my life and by the time I, we came back home permanently, I was like, nah, I want to say, what was I, how old was I in 2015? You guys go back, I was like 23, 22? right <laughs> anyway it was 2015 when we came back and the 2015 end too so i couldn't even come back home and be like yeah i'm gonna enter this year i had to wait for the next year which was like ugh, annoying but that was like the story of my life so immediately from next year when from 2016 as soon as i could enter i started entering i entered in 2016 i entered in 2017 i entered in 2018 all rejected all right let me tell you guys y'all don't know nothing about rejection okay these people won't even tell you nothing okay like and what really really got to me what got me excited 
I need to go and take a picture of this picture that my mom, that my parents have hanging up in their room, which is like a, a, a newspaper clipping from the Republican, I believe. And they had used my image to promote the pageant and say, hey guys, this is Emily Kandanga. She submitted her entry, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> does this mean they like me? <laughs> no. <laughs> I I always say I'm so grateful now because I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. 2016, 17, 18 year old me was not ready for any of the pressure, any of the work, any of the commitment, the time management of it all. I wasn't ready. Right? So um, I was rejected three times, guys. Take note, guys. Do not give up on your dream. All right, if there's something that you want to do, and I really felt a deep, deep calling. Like, I felt like I needed to be part of this pageant. I didn't care if I won, I just knew I needed to walk through this journey in my life. So, I kept applying. And then last year, when it came to a uh, time to apply, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of defeated. I was like, man, these guys don't even know what they want. I was like, they're gonna reject me three times. What they know about me? <laughs> it was it was really hard. I had to like hype myself up and tell myself, you know what, girl, you're still worthy, you still got this. But deep down I was like, ooh. <laughs> I was hurting. So I did enter for a last year and I I remember I was like, I'm not gonna arrange a whole new photo shoot because the previous three years I had gone all out, arranged photo shoots. I mean, mind you, most of them were like <laughs> done by my sister. Shout out, Rika. Girl, you've been there. She, she just did them on her like DSLR herself. But I mean, effort was put in, right? So um, last year, I was like, you know what? I'm going to enter, but I'm not going to arrange a new shoot. I'm going to use the photos that I used to enter in 2018. And that's what I did. I sent those same photos, you know, just up my uh, bio and all those details because I mean, growth had occurred. So I was definitely also portraying myself in a different way just by how I was writing about myself. So it was good, honey. And we got the email, open it up, and it's like, ooh, ooh, come for interviews. And I'm like, oh my gosh, woohoo. Got to my interview, I borrowed my sister's suit. Celeste, girl, this this thing was a family dream. My family knew how much I wanted to take part in Miss Namibia too. So when the time came, everybody showed up. So we go on to the interviews. I, I borrowed my sister's suit, Celeste. Shout out, girl, thank you. Her closet is like our closet. So she had this cute fuchsia pink suit situation. There were actually two separates, like a jacket and a pair of pants. And I put them together with a nice white blouse. Um, and I went in there. Hair was all nice and did up. The twist out was fresh, darling. Woo woo. Went there, spoke about myself like I knew who the poop I was, honey. I definitely was like, I mean, of course, nervous, shaking in my boots. <laughs> But making sure I was sitting properly, making eye contact with all the judges, and smiling, and smiling, and thank you. <laughs> yes, it was like that. And I remember I thought I bombed the interview because there was a point where they asked me, it was during the time that um, the we had just gone into a state of emergency for drought, and that was just recently announced. Like, that was the news in, in the country at the time. And they asked me, yeah, they said, what did the president declare... Uh, recently and I was like I know this I know this I'm a head of all my dad has a farm we have a farm I know all about the drought I know what happens I know it's not good in that moment everything was gone guys I couldn't even remember I was just like I'm not sure but I'm going to find out <laughs> and that was it I literally smiled my way through and told them I was gonna go read up on it because I couldn't remember it at the time. Yes, so because of how my interview went, or at least that one question anyway, I was feeling so unsure. I was like, oh gosh, they ain't gonna pick me. I didn't even know that the drought was a national state of emergency. Like, ugh. So I was kind of beating myself up about it. And I'm not gonna lie, the week after the interviews, I just was so down. And I just was beating myself up. It was not good and I remember I kept telling myself like girl you did all you can you know like you, you just gotta let it go caca you know like let the universe do what it needs to do um you've done your bit you've done all you can do literally everything you can do you've done it 
so that gave me some peace and then when I got that call back yo that gave me real peace <laughs> I was like oh my god I remember it was a Thursday it was a Thursday um, and it was just before work was about to be done so I get off at 4 30 so it was just like 4 15 there I was just kind of waiting for time to go by so I could just go home right and I'm sitting there and I see a call on my phone and I'm like I don't know this number anyway so I picked up the call obviously I was like I'm gonna answer every call right now because I'm trying to be in top 30 like what's good call me up they call me Hanalee's there she's like hello this is Hanalee from Miss Namibia and I'm like huh <laughs> I was literally, I was so dramatic. I was, I was trying to keep cool, but I was also like, ah, you called me. <laughs> so, yeah, she's like, yes, I'd just like to let you know that you've been selected for top 30. Then she asked me if I'm available for the journey. And I'm like, honey, yes. I done waited for three years. <sighs> so, yeah, that was the callback. <laughs> and it was a, an amazing moment. I remember I just went back to my desk. And I just sat there. I just wanted to bask in the moment. Didn't want to tell anyone yet. I was just like, this is what it feels like. <laughs> I basked in every single moment of this journey. And it's. I think that's why the memories are so fresh and vivid. Ugh. Okay, so for top 30, we went through workshops, which was something new. Miss Namibia pageant in the past hadn't done this, and I learned this from my sister, Vara, who had competed before. This was her second time competing, and she was also in the top 30. And um, so this time around, they had workshops, like sort of grooming to get us ready, you know, learning how to sit, how to walk, how to stand, how to speak. So we did all of that stuff, how to do your makeup, just how to present yourself and make sure that you're always looking presentable. And one of the things we were also being harped about immediately because I mean, our images were all over the place. Um, when, when Top 30 was announced, we were in the newspapers, we were on Facebook, we were everywhere. And people were like, oh my gosh. Okay, people weren't really the nicest, um, you know, social media. I don't know what's wrong with you people. Like, why you gotta be like that? We just out here trying to put ourselves out there, trying to grow, trying to flourish, find ourselves. <sighs> so I honestly, that's how I felt about, about it because I was like, I am here for another reason. I am not here for these rude comments on Facebook, okay? I am living my dream. So those, count, those comments could not get me down. Oh, Lord, nothing could get me down. <laughs> was on fire guys I was so happy so I now had to figure out how I was gonna balance work and doing these workshops we did these workshops for three weeks straight every Saturday and Sunday Saturday was a full day most Sundays were full days we were like in the workshop from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. so it felt like I was working all week which it really was it was job it was job, 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 okay? It was rough there in terms of like body and feeling tired and trying to balance everything, running a boot camp, going to your nine to five, going to the workshops on the weekend. It was a challenge. It really was a challenge, not gonna lie. There I have to give a shout out to my boyfriend because he was there, he was there for me mentally. I was like falling apart sometimes and, and he'd be there, he'd come and pick me up because I didn't always want to drive myself to places. I really appreciated that, so thank you, boo. <laughs> I don't even know if he watches my videos, but hey, shout out. So during the workshops, we got so much information thrown at us. Information, we got booklets, we got everything. They brought people in to help us learn. I remember they brought this woman in who taught us how to, to speak and present ourselves in public speaking. They brought someone to help teach us makeup. Uh, someone, to, then they brought, oh, our Miss T Namibia 2019. They brought Nicole. Nicole was, it was so lovely meeting her. Oh, she's so cute. I actually ended up training her and helping her with her fitness goals. Oh, Nicole is doing so well. Shout out, girl. Shout out. It was, it was, it was jam packed to say the least. And on top of that, we had to show up every Friday, every, what I keep saying Friday, every Saturday and Sunday looking up like a million dollars, okay? Okay, you had to be beat, okay? 
and, and, and they didn't want no white beat. They wanted glam. They would say, glam up. And you're just like, I didn't even know how to put lashes on. So this journey, one of the things that I brought, came out with was totally drastically improving my makeup skills because I think I had like negative zero before it began. And now I think I'm like at a solid 50 out of 100. I think I'm being too mean to myself. I think I'm at least a good, you know, 97%. What's, what's up, man? But this was one of the greatest lessons um, right away that the workshop showed to me. I was like, girl, you gotta get your act together. Ain't nobody gonna be gluing lashes for you, all right? <laughs> so I had to teach myself all those things, learn how to glue my lashes. I remember the first time I did it, it was for a workshop. I remember I put it for a workshop and I know for a fact because I could feel it and see it and I, I remember asking rejoice <laughs> I was like girl is this is this eyelash like proper because it was on top of my lid it wasn't like where it's supposed to be sitting right on the lash line but you know we live and we learn practice practice does make perfect people okay so top 30 workshops done throughout that whole top 30 journey we had to be selling like tickets raffle raff, no, not raffle tickets raffle like tickets basically selling seats for people to come and support us for the event so that was also taking place simultaneously on top of job okay on top of boot camp on top of me working out for my own sanity it was a lot big ups and big ups big ups so the night came all right um the winter bash is what they call it um night came for the winter bash Woo! they're gonna announce the top 12 by then i was just like whatever happens happens i had two beautiful dresses made by my sister Sally shout out to Sally through her company helped me tailor some beautiful dresses for um, that winter bash so I didn't have to stress too much about um, that I don't know what my journey would have been like without her support because she also helped me with my grand ball gown at the end of everything so so top 39 were there intro bam 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 obviously everything just runs by so quickly I don't, boom 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 before you know it the night is over we also had to work on our intros <laughs> I don't think I remember my intro but this is my diary from last year and I keep all my diaries because I love going back and just reading seeing where my mindset was I know I've highlighted everything here <laughs> here <clears throat> my name is Emily I was born in Vintook, but consider myself a citizen of the world because growing up, I went to 10 different schools across three different continents. My mission is to use the power of movement to instill confidence within those in my communities in order for them to believe that they can do absolutely whatever they put their minds to. I move to inspire. I totally remixed it there at the end, but hey, it was something along those lines. I know on the night, it, it was it, it was it had completely changed. I remember shaking so much. I was shaking in my boots, guys, like walking down that and trying to look cool, smiling, you know, making sure my my posture was on point. Lord, my posture. I struggle so much with my posture because I've been a chronic sloucher all my life. <laughs> So the big part of the show was quickly over and it was time to announce the top 12. Okay, we were standing back there, all of us in a row, holding hands, and I'm just like, I didn't even know if I was saying a prayer. At that point, I was just like, <laughs> waiting to hear my name, I ain't gonna lie. I was like, Jesus, <laughs> you didn't bring me this far. I was like, nope. And lo and behold, I think I was like the third or fourth girl that was called up so that was so exciting oh, guys people came out in numbers okay and they had signs they had signs they had my faces on posters they were screaming every single time I came onto the stage and it was so hard not to smile and just be genuinely happy in that moment oh lord thank you I get chills thinking about it because I've, I've never felt so loved um, <laughs> It was amazing. It was amazing. Top 12 is announced, and of course my family wants to go out and chill and hang out because woohoo, we're excited. But we're told that tomorrow, which was like the Saturday, we needed to be at NBC by 7.30 or some odd ass time in the early morning. <laughs> we did go out. I remember we went to News Cafe, had some shots. We're like, woohoo, and I'm just like, Lord. I'm trying to get not, not, 
get too excited <laughs> because I'm like, you have to be up and you have to beat your face and you gotta be on time. So next day up, doing my face, Abbott is there. <laughs> he drives me, drops me off and um, yeah, it began. We were told right then what was expected of us. Um, some girls were late and that is a big mm, 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 mm when it comes to Connie Moritz and, and the whole Miss Namibia organization and, and honestly, just in life. Why you gotta be late? Like, don't be late. It's not cute. It's not showing respect to the people that who are waiting for you. It's not showing respect to yourself. So, I was on time. And then we proceeded off to the NBC studios where we shot the whole day. None of us were ready for that. <laughs> None of us were ready to shoot all day. We were literally like, when is this gonna end? And mind you, we, were, we weren't being ungrateful. We were just uh, like, I think a little bit overwhelmed. We were thrown into the deep end. Okay, so fast forwarding to the week that we moved into Country Club. All right, um, yeah, because we did a whole bunch of things. I mean, leading up to that, uh, that point, uh, we had radio interviews, we did TV, we did, um, what else did we do? We did appearances. We did a bunch of things that um, the Miss Namibia organization organizes. So most of the stuff is basically to just support the sponsors that sponsor the pageant. So going, we went to NDTC, we looked at some diamonds, y'all. Yeah. Diamonds are forever. We looked at some diamonds. Yeah, we did so many things. We also visited some endangered animals um, over at the rest camp. So we got to see pangolins. We saw vultures, endangered species. So that was pretty cool. The guys there were really, really informative. That was such a nice trip. You know, we, uh, people always ask me, did you not go to NWR? I'm like, no, okay. We didn't go to no lodges. <laughs> we didn't, please don't ask me. We didn't go, okay. So the day we moved into Country Club was something. Packing was a mission, okay? I overpacked, obviously. I packed like my whole closet. I think I had four suitcases, two big ones, two small ones, because I needed one for shoes, one for, I mean, makeup. So the two small ones were like shoes and makeup and cosmetics. And then the big ones were clothes and all this stuff. So oof, it was a lot. Plus I had my natural hair out, which I really, really uh, wanted to make sure that I was able to maintain and stay true and raw to myself because this is how I identified, okay? And I didn't want anybody to come and tell me anything about straightening my hair, which did happen um, during one of the workshops. And I was just like, no, honey, that's not an option. Okay, so next. <laughs> next idea please so yeah the day we moved into country club yeah we were thrown right into it too we had to go into fittings so we show up everybody looking cute first of all i didn't know whether to dress up or to show up real cash like hey checking into the hotel girl girl showed up with heels full beats i was like <laughs> I quickly went to my room. I remember rushing to my room once we got checked in, changing into heels and like throwing on a smarter jacket just so I could look a little bit formal. I was like, girl, what you doing? But I really didn't know. I had no clue. So guys, let's just have a moment for the sash. A moment for the sash. Oh, the sash has a little bit of makeup. <laughs> Miss Namibia finalist 2019. That's me.